names that are really founding fathers' names. And they, they, I'm not making these up. It's part of the <coughs> record. Would you then publish the poetry with this attestation? And so uh, they couldn't say no. They said, sure, we'll do it. So what happened was, and this involved the governor, got to the governor's level, because the governor set it up. Thomas Hutchinson, who was the last civilian governor. You've got to remember now, at this time, he, 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 was, he essentially became the last civilian governor uh, of, of, the, of the province of Massachusetts Bay Colony. And the reason was because of the war comes. No one knew it at the time, but the next governor was going to be General Gage. So, a military governor. So anyway, you have to realize also that he, there's a political background here that's really kind of interesting. There's a lot of layers to this story. Uh, I was talking to Bob this morning, he said, how'd you like the book? Because he, he bought it earlier. He says, well, I'm about halfway through, through and I think I'm getting to the interesting part. Uh, but there's a, a lot of levels that are in there that are slowly, <coughs> slowly hopefully, uh, become apparent as, as you read it. Um, but um, he, he, was, he was being criticized by uh, the Hancock group, which was promoting independence. Not so much Hancock, actually James Otis was the, and Sam Adams. Those were the real firebrands. And they've got things going, so it was getting kind of out of hand. So in 1772, um, Thomas Hutchinson was hanging on by kind of a threat, a political threat. So I think that he probably went along with this trial idea to try to maybe divert from some of the other issues, like the Stamp Act. He actually gets support of the Stamp Act. But what he said was, I su while I support it publicly, I don't, uh, privately I don't. And that's, that sounds familiar, doesn't it? Uh, <laughs> looking at today. Uh, so anyway, uh, he organized this, they got the men gathered there, they brought Phyllis in, and she stood before him. And she basically, um, after an hour of intense, who knows, this is the part that no one knows. This is where the play comes in. All I've told you so far is absolutely historical accuracy. But there is no written record of that trial, of what happened in that room. What happened in that, the only written evidence of that, what happened in that room, is that attestation I was telling you about, was signed by all these men, including John Hancock. And he signed another document later on, as we all know. Um, but this is kind of a precursor to that other document. And I kind of put that into the play, as part of the layers. Because there was another document that was signed, and it kind of it was an interesting irony of history. I told you about uh, John Wheatley, and I told you about Nathaniel. What I didn't tell you is that John Wheatley was a uh, very, very uh, avid loyalist. But his son Nat Nathaniel was a patriot because he also signed an attestation in 1768 in Dorchester testing that he was a had become a member of a secret society called the Sons of Liberty. So there's this rift in the family, but it's kind of hidden from the father <coughs> until the play. So you think about these different groups, and they're all kind of converging in this room, and different religions. They're all Christians, but they're different, they're different denominations. You know. So they don't all agree either. Uh, <coughs> It's a good thing. But what I like to think about, you know, there's a lot of revisionism going on today in American history. We think about, you know, we hear a lot about, well, the founding fathers were, were white, they were all white, they were all rich. Um, basically, you know, that's, that's all we know about them. But in fact, this group of men who were all white and were very wealthy and were very prominent, they were, had before them for the first time an African American. And they had to come to a decision, and this was a real phenomenon for them because none of them had ever seen an educated African American. It's just, well, it didn't exist really at that time. Um, or if it did, I don't know about it. It, it was very few. So, anyway, they had to then come to the decision 
knowing that, number one, they, they could be reviled. Maybe she was lying, maybe the family's lying, maybe it's, and later on it will come out. And also there was a mob at this time. You have to realize also, and I didn't talk about it, but very briefly, Boston was ruled by a mob from, say, 1760 to 1765. The vestiges of that mob still existing, existed on the streets of Boston. These were the Sons of Liberty. Uh, they weren't originally the Sons of Liberty, but they were then morphed into the Tea Party. So, but it was tricky to go out on the streets of Boston, and especially during uh, festivities such as, which is going to happen right the day of the trial, which is going on the day of the trial, which is called Pope's Day. And Pope's Day is in, in November 5th, which is in memory of uh, Guy Fawkes Day in, in England, where, you know, the Catholics have tried to blow up the Parliament. That's, that, and he was hung, drawn, and quartered in the 15th century. That was Guy Fawkes, okay? So then Boston, in its own inimical way, took on that tradition. <coughs> they didn't like Catholics at that time, to be honest, okay? Uh, and so they had, they had, on Guy Fawkes Day, Pope's Day, and they would march through the streets, carrying effigies of the Pope, they hated the Pope, and they hated Catholics. And uh, it was a celebration that turned into a melee, but it was, it was, it was kind of the time, the things that they did for enjoyment. So they just kind of, <laughs> and the trial was going on at, on this day. And uh, so anyway, uh, these gentlemen, to make a long story short, signed the attestation all over. Phyllis then, um, Mr. Wheatley took the, by uh, Mrs. Wheatley too, the, 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 the attestation to the publishers in Boston, and they said, uh, yeah, good, but you know, not so much. Don't think we're going to do it. So then that next spring, uh, Nathaniel took uh, Phyllis on a ship, on their ship, to Boston where Phyllis had become known, sorry, to England, where Phyllis in London, where Phyllis had become known and uh, well admired. And the book was originally published then in, in, in England in 1773. Mm -hmm. now, Phyllis is the considered the mother of, of African American literature. It descends from her, so it's considered a matriarchal uh, <coughs> descendancy. And, uh, she then, it's, uh, the, the last rest of her life you don't want to know because it was so sad, and I didn't want to touch that, I don't want to go there, but um, anyway, that's, that's basically what the book is about. And it's, it was produced as a play. It was produced uh, 10 years ago at Bridgewater State College, full production. Um, it was, um, so it, it's a script. It's basically the script from the play. So it's a little bit different reading, Bob, than reading uh, you have to see it. I have actually the video of it, but I'm not able to, to do that here. So I, if there's any questions or um, comments, uh, yes. are you a descendant of John Wheatley? I'm uh, I'm a son of the American Revolution via my great great six generations back uh, grandfather uh, Elwood uh, Wheatley Leonard sorry Leonard Wheatley. Who was on the Continental Line? Uh, but I'm still trying to figure out if there's a, a link to the Wheatley's in Boston. I can't verify that. Well, Just as a general comment to everybody, you you in fact can use this in here. You, you can hook up to any one of these TVs. You don't need a projector. All you need is the uh, uh, PowerPoint on your computer, and it works. Okay, so I was going to say I bought this so that I could make a. a a YouTube presentation because I'm trying to push the book. And if anybody wants to use the same setup, you want them to just call me. Well, Peter. you mentioned that the later life was mm -hmm. tragic. The what? Oh, uh, could you detail well, that a little? Uh, well, what she, happened to her? She, she, had, she uh, what happened was her great supporters were the Weasels. When the revolution really got going, Boston got shelled by the British. The Wheatley Mansion was destroyed. The Wheatley family just kind of dispersed. Uh, Nathaniel went to England um, for a while. I don't. I, it's hard to 
get it all down straight. But anyways, she tied up, linked up with this guy, um, and I'm trying to think of his name, so I can't remember, but um, he was kind of a bum, and she didn't know it. Uh, he was kind of a hustler. And I think he, she was prominent, and he was trying to latch on to her. Anyway, they had three children. Then he left her, and she really died in poverty uh, on the north side of, of Beacon Hill. You know, have you been to the, the Black History Museum in the north side of Beacon Hill? Sometimes you should go there, because that's where the, uh, that's where a lot of the black community in, in Boston settled. Uh, but that's where she died, and the interesting thing is, they don't know where she was buried. She was buried in a pauper's grave. Mm -hmm. But you can imagine if there were a, if they knew where she was buried, she'd be in the granary or somewhere like that. Uh, but no, it, it didn't work out. Did she marry a black guy or a black guy? Yeah. I don't know. He must. He he could have been a freed slave. There were a few. Yeah. Like Attica, Atticus, um, you know, during the uh, um, rebellion the massacre. Yeah. At the uh, Boston, Boston massacre. Um, so, but that's her name that's, was Phyllis. Well, that's interesting too, because her name, the Wheatleys, when they got her home, she just come across on the brick, right? The Phyllis, and they said the kids said, "Let's name her the Phyllis. Let's name her Phyllis after the brick." And then in those days, if you had, I mean, uh, often the uh, slaves would take the, the surname of their master. That was just kind of a general thing that they did. She enjoyed, she more or less became part of the family. Yeah, right, exactly. That's a good point. I mean, I, I, hope that, I was hoping that was coming out because they didn't really treat her like a slave. In That's fact, right. they, they, they gave, Mr. Wheatley gave her her manumission um, right, right around the time of the play, just after when the play took place uh -huh. in 1773. Uh, she, she was, in fact, a free. Then she was free. For the time a free slave. But, but see, the, the Wheatley's goal was, Mrs. Wheatley especially, was to teach her how to become a writer. Well, first educator, okay. Then when they found this extra talent, they thought, well, maybe she could make a living out of it. Yeah. And so that was her plan. Her plan was to, so cause she was all wrong. They, they wanted to free her. They planned to free her, but they, they wanted to make sure that she was going to be able to support herself. And that's mm -hmm. why they promoted her. And, and I, um, unfortunately, um, Times were against her as far as any kind of commercial uh, yeah. uh, aggrandizement. Uh, please. Wait, was it when was it uh, published here in the United States? It was published in England in uh, 1764 by a company called the Polk. It was a Polk published P O L K. 1774. 1774. Took about a year. And never, well, no. Well, subsequently, she was published here, but, um, and, and she's, a, you know, much honored now. And, yeah. You know, uh, there's Boston, they've got a statue to her, and the Wheatley High School, Wheatley, all these Wheatley schools you see around. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think Boston's very proud of the fact that, you know, she's related to Boston. There's a question back there. Do you have a question? Uh, yeah. Uh, what happened to the three children? Any record what happened to the three children? They, they uh, the, 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 the originally they had, they had five children. The, the two that survived were Mary and Nathaniel. Mary uh, married um, a prominent um, Rhode Island, well, he wasn't Rhode Island then, but John Rothrock, who was a prominent minister. And she married him, and then they moved to Rhode Island. Uh, so that was the end of that. Nathaniel's kind of a mystery to me. Because um, there, he may have at one point had a, there was a Nathaniel Wheatley Wharf in Boston and uh, found it in a, an old book, uh, but it was just like one reference to it and uh, I knew, knew who it was, but I couldn't find any more. So I do think that he had a, a wharf and some kind of commercial Business. He must have been educated, apparently. He took my family. He'd gone to Harvard. He graduated. You know, they all graduated from Harvard around, uh, in those days, like 16 years old. <coughs>